Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 3 part 5. In this part we are summing up our door by making the door animate when we walk up to it and use one of our keys. So for doing that we're going to use our timeline. So we've previously made our timeline on our door actor but now we're going to double click onto it and work on these two tracks here. So the idea is, is that these two tracks are going to control the key position and the door position. I've got two because I'm going to have an animation for the key going into the door and then an animation for the door actually moving down and out of the way. So let's start on the key position. Scroll down until you get the key position track and the track is like basically a graph and you want to hold down shift on your keyboard and left click at a point on this graph. We're going to choose a time of zero and a value of 100. If we want to see that value on here, we can use these buttons here, the zoom, to see where that is on our graph. The second point for this is shift click again. It's going to go for a time of 1.5 and a value of 0. Again, click on these two to zoom it. And you'll see this line appear. This line indicates the motion of this key. So it's going to start 50 units away and over 1.5 seconds it's going to move back to zero. So to show that in working, let's go back to our event graph. So the key position here is what we'll be doing. So before we mess about the key position, we actually have to add the key to the actual actor. So before we start the timeline, we're going to add a static mesh component and we're going to add a skull to this from the details panel this will give us a return value that return value we want to store as a variable so if you take out from a return value you can promote that to a variable with an option at the top of the list choose that and a new variable will appear in your bottom uh, variable list you want to name it key mesh the reason why we're still working as a reference is because it makes it a lot easier to access it later when we need to move it and, and uh, remove it from the whole actor. So once we've done the key mesh, we want to attach it to our key hole. So key hole, we're going to drag from our key mesh and attach to component. And we're going to choose target is seen component. See it says target is seen component. The other one says target is actor. We want target is seen component. Click on that. And the parent for this is going to be the keyhole. So drag your keyhole onto the parent. The location rule, rotation rule, and scale rule tell the attachment how it should be attached to it. By default, keep relative means that it's going to just keep it where it currently is, and when the keyhole moves, that it'll move with it. But instead, I want it to actually snap to the position to the keyhole. So if I change these to snap to target, it'll actually move my key to the keyhole. I can then, once I finish with that, go to play from start. Now we've added the key to the actor, we can use the timeline key position track to move the key. So key position, we're going to drag in our key mesh from our variable list and choose get. So this is the key mesh we created earlier, here. The key mesh, we're going to drag out and we're going to uh, set relative location. And the relative location is the location is uh, is the location it is set a uh, difference between its um, parent. So the key mesh, its parent is the keyhole. So this will be a lo location in relation to the keyhole. Now I'm only moving in one direction, so I'm going to split my location vector here into three floats. So right click and choose split. I've now got X, Y, and Z. If we go to my viewport. To remind us that I'm using the X axis as its forward uh, movement. So in my event graph, I'm using the X here. So drag key position to X. Okay, with that all done, we want to go back to our viewport and we're going to go back to our keyhole socket here, our scene component, sorry. 
And on here, we want to make sure the scale is set to 111. So click the reset default button. And it's important to note that this is going to move in a location based on its relative uh, position. So let's be relative to the keyhole, not the door. My mistake. So rather than moving the key in the X axis, which is this way, we want to move it in the Y axis. So go to your event graph and swap it over to the Y axis. Click compile and let's test that out. Pick up the key and there goes the key into the door. So the next task is to make the timeline make the door move down. So go back to your door and go into your, your timeline. Now the key position animation ends at 1.5 seconds. So on our door position we can make a new uh, new, uh, new point and you set the time to start at 2 seconds and the value is going to start at 0 we are then going to add another point with a time of 4 and a value of minus 310 don't forget we can click these zooms to see the whole graph now to make the door stagger like it is an old door, like an old uh, ancient door. I'm going to add another point in the middle of this. So I'm going to shift click and move it slightly up and make another one. Slightly down. Another one. And that's going to be almost the same like so. So you've got this sort of jolt basically. Uh, like it is an old door. And you'll see this in action when we get to it. So our time line is currently lasting 4 seconds. Um, actually, let's change that to 6 seconds, make it a bit slower. And spread these out a bit more. Like so. The length of this timeline, you can see at the top, is now going to be 6 seconds. So I'm going to change that to 6. And click Compile. Go to your event graph. And now we can use the door position to control the door's location. So drag your door mesh out. And from there, set relative location and its target location we're going to right click and split that and we're changing the Z location so it's up and down movement so drag that into door position track like so and click compile so now when we go to open the door we pick up the key the key gets inserted and the door does this animation Perfect. I can now proceed through the level. We can now place those in strategic locations inside our maze. And that brings us to the end of chapter 3. In this chapter, we focus on creating the doors and the key system for our game mechanic. In the first part, we created a door blueprint, including its components. Next, we made it so we can interact with the door. And then we made a key platform that held a key that we can pick up. We then made the player be able to pick up the key and add it to their inventory of keys. And then finally, we worked on the door animation for the key to actually open the door and move it down into the ground. And that's it for chapter three, as I said. So join us in chapter four, where we start adding extra gameplay mechanics such as traps. So these are gonna be things that are gonna do damage to the player and stop you from reaching the end goal. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next chapter. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.